What is going on YouTube? Kation93 here with a remastered version of my Shadow Reverse tutorial. And this is not only going to be a video that will kind of give me a second chance to teach you the concepts of the shadow, but I also think it's important because the shadow is a very difficult trick to a lot of pen spinners at first. So hopefully getting kind of two tutorials on it will be more helpful in helping you guys learn it. So if you didn't actually learn the shadow yet, it's not a big deal because it's not like, actually, here's a little philosophical point is that sometimes a forward trick and a backward trick are equally difficult. It just might seem like the backward trick or the reverse trick is a little bit more difficult because you've already learned the forward trick. But in the case of the shadow, it's pretty much basically a mirror image of itself when you do the reverse. So if you haven't learned the shadow regular, the normal shadow that I posted last week, then this shouldn't be that much more difficult than that. Blah, blah, blah. You guys kind of see where I'm going here. Anyway, the shadow reverse, as you imagine, is the reverse motion of the regular shadow. And it looks something like this. If you were, for example, if you were left-handed and you're doing the normal shadow, oh, can I do it? No, I can't. Definitely can't. Nope. If you were to do the shadow and you're left-handed, for example, the pen is spinning in a clockwise motion and the way you do the shadow, hey, I almost did it there. Um, the way you do the shadow is actually the same way that you would be doing the shadow reverse on this hand, as in the motion looks exactly the same. So this is kind of a brutal thought, but if you were to do a normal shadow, let's say you were to cut these two fingers off as they were doing the shadow and transplace them onto these two fingers here, like match them over one to one, the motion will look exactly the same in case that helps anybody out there. Kind of doubt it does, but kind of my thought process. So the idea is very much the same against mirror image of itself. So instead of pulling your hand back, like before you want to pull your hand inward and same concept about grip the pen about one half to one third of the way up the pen, a little bit more of the weight further away from you. And you know, you pull the pen in and then you, you know, move your hand out like that. So the pen swings forward. And then when the pen gets to, again, right about the point where it's almost parallel with your fingers again, or just approaching that, you wanna lift up now your index finger here so that the pen is free to spin on the surface of your fingers here. And once the pen has made that, that one revol or that half revolution on top, you then either drop your index finger or raise your middle finger, whichever one or both. And then the pen will rotate and this end will fall and the last half of the revolution is there. Again, the shadow is 1.5 revolutions and its reverse is exactly 1.5 as well, as you could easily imagine. So the forces for the forward and the back, or sorry, the forces involved with regards to the shadow normal versus the shadow reverse are exactly the same. Again, as you could probably imagine. Um, there are tricks where this is not necessarily true. For example, the thumb around reverse requires slightly less force than the thumb around forward or normal. Uh, but this one, because you're essentially always keeping your hand flat in both tricks. So even in the shadow, uh, when you do the shadow, if you can do the shadow, like I can, and the shadow reverse, they're in the same plane. They're still spinning on top of your fingers. So the forces are almost exactly the same, just the opposite direction of force of application. Very technical physics-y thing. So sorry about that. But again, you want to pull your hand in a little bit, pretty much as far as it will go but not to the point where it's you know super uncomfortable. As far as it comfortably goes, and then push it to the other extent of how comfortable you can get, so right, like that. And then I was getting ahead of myself there, but once the pen gets to the point where it's right about here, as an approaching parallel with your fingers, then you wanna let go. And just like in my shadow tutorial, Try practicing just getting the pen there in the first place. If you've mastered the shadow or if you've done the shadow a few times, you probably understand what this is like and you probably understand the force involved and you have that feel for it. But again, if you happen to miss that tutorial or if you're learning this before the shadow for whatever reason, um, there's that idea. So you wanna release the pen as it's approaching parallel to your fingers. And then try to just do that release a few times and try to, as much as you can, keep the pen on your hand. 
I realized that, you know, if you put a little bit too much force into it, you get a little overzealous or a little overexcited, uh, then you might, you know, the pen might fly that way as I'm trying to do, but apparently it won't cooperate with me. Um, intentionally failing is sometimes difficult. Uh, but if you do the trick a little bit too light or you release a little bit at a different time, then again, I'm doing this. It's really hard to intentionally fail when you know how to do it. Um, the pen could fall this way or even go even further out this way. So at least try to maintain the pen on your hand. And with the shadow reverse, it's much easier to keep it on your hand because um, especially if you mess up. The reason is because if you, for example, let go a little bit too early, let's say you let go here, then the momentum of the pen is going to at least keep the pen on the fingers because you have three fingers here where the pen can potentially rest on or land on. Whereas with the normal shadow, you pretty much have your thumb and your thumb's really not in the vicinity to kind of like keep the pen there, if you know what I mean, you know. Shadow reverse is a little bit more forgiving in that regard. If I could, again, do it properly. Why can't I do this? There we go. So when you release, keep in mind again, the shadow and shadow reverse can start in any finger slot and then end in any finger slot. So again, I'm showing you shadow reverse one, two to one, two. If you want to, you can do shadow one, two to two, three, just like that, or you know anything else. You can even technically go up the hand with a shadow reverse. Similarly, you can also go down the hand with a shadow, um, which I kind of didn't mention in that tutorial. But for example, you can do a shadow two, three, I can't, that was bad. Two, three, two, again, that was also bad. Two, three to one, two, kind of like that. That was a shadow reverse, two, three to one, two, which is kind of uh, counterintuitive at first because you think that the pen should either stay here or because it's spinning in, in this case, a clockwise motion, that it should be going up the hand for some reason. That might be intuitive to some people, might not. If you don't understand what I just said, don't worry about it but it's possible to go up and down the hand with both the shadow forward and reverse. That's the lesson of what that little aside was for. But anyway, just to repeat again, hold the pen here. In as far as you your hand will go, out as far as your hand will go, and when the pen is just about parallel, then you release and try to release it so that the pen lands somewhere on your hand, preferably around the finger slot that you're going to be catching it in. The reason why it keeps falling into my thumb flap or this area here, like now it's not doing it, of course. The reason why it keeps falling into here is because I'm actually like really subtly setting up to catch it in that finger slot and I'm not catching it. So that's why it's doing that. But for example, if I were to do two, three or start in two, three, I'd want it to be somewhere on my hand at least for half a revolution. Because the shadow is 1.5 revolutions and two thirds of those revolutions, so one complete revolution, although not continuously, is done while gripping the pen. So let's say you start the pen here. When you do that release, when it gets to almost parallel, that's half a revolution right there, right? So half. The pen will spin about half on your hand. And when you catch it, the other half is that bit right there. So that's where the one and a half revolutions comes from. And again, just like I mentioned in the previous video, an easy way to tell is to use a single-sided mod or a non-symmetrical or asymmetrical mod. Uh, in this case, not a mod at all, standard Pentel RSVP. Uh, the reason why I use this pen for the remastered series, in addition to the point that I can prove that I can do these tricks without a mod, is also because it's very easy to tell when you've done a trick that is 1.5 revolutions. Um, for example, if you were to use a double-sided mod, and I used this example last time, um, you might not know if you've done one and a half revolutions because it's pretty much identical in terms of which, what the ends look like. But for the RSVP, it's very different. You have a capping of a tip. So when you start off the shadow reverse one, two to one, two, the, I said to put the heavier part away from you. So the cap is away from you. When you do the trick, the tip should now be uh, away from you. And that will indicate that you've done one and a half revolutions, or at least a revolution that is ending in 0.5. So it could be 2.5, could be 3.5, but the difference between a 1.5 and a 2.5 revolution shadow, shadow reverse, is very, very significant. You would definitely feel it. You wouldn't mistake one for the other. So that is how you would do the shadow reverse. The catching idea is the same thing. So when it gets to, um, that was a little too far, to the point where it's just about to land in the finger slot, lift your middle finger up, drop your index finger in this case, 
and then let the pen do its thing there. Same thing in the other finger slots here are just like that. So hopefully that gave me a decent second chance of teaching you guys how the shadow works. This is a difficult trick, so do not get discouraged. Please don't get discouraged if you are not able to do it for a very long time. I struggled with this trick for a very long time as well. I think it took me about a week to finally do the shadow once correctly, and then it took me like closer to a month to get right. So it does take a long time, and please don't let those numbers discourage you either. Don't say, oh, k 93 took a month to master the shadow. It must take me twice as long or three times as long to learn. No, it doesn't work that way. Um, that's just saying that it is a difficult trick. So if you're like me, if you put a lot of time and effort into it, you can actually probably learn it faster than I can. And you also have the benefit that you have this video to help you out and the previous video um, as well. I did not have as great videos in my opinion back in the day when I learned shadow. So it was a little bit more difficult. Um, but given that you guys have this video now, you have the slow-mos at the beginning and the end of this video, hopefully it'll be a little bit easier for you guys to learn. So don't be discouraged, you can do it. So that'll do it for this video. Again, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, please feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe for more in the future. And I'll see you guys in the next video.